everyone, Dr. Amri from Pain Free and Fit. Today, part three of our continuing series on Bulgarian split squats for low back spondylolisthesis pain. We're going to be talking about how to correct anterior hip glides or anterior hip malpositions, which is a common biomechanical problem in low back spondylolisthesis pain to relax our hip flexor muscles and to decrease the mechanical stress on the low back. Hope you enjoy. So in the first two parts of this series on Bulgarian split squats for spondylolisthesis, we talked about posterior pelvic tilting and how to increase your ability to maintain a posterior pelvic tilt to avoid that extension or that increased arch in the lower back, which causes spondylolisthesis vertebra to slide forward, compresses facet joints, posterior aspect of the disc, and aggravates pain. Today we're going to take another concept with Bulgarian split squats to address another common mechanical problem for spondylolisthesis sufferers, which is hip flexion. Hip flexion, when you bend your hip forward, many times with spondylolisthesis sufferers, the hip joint is not centered in the socket correctly. What happens is because many people with spondylolisthesis have hypertonic or tight hip flexor muscles on the front aspect of their thigh, which contribute to that anterior pelvic tilt, the tailbone being higher than the pubic bone, those hip flexors actually pull the femoral head more forward in the hip socket because they weaken the antagonist or opposite muscle, the glute max, the main buttock muscle. And the glute max's job, one of them, is to maintain a posterior or a backwards tension on that hip joint so that the ball in the socket stays in a nice centered position and it doesn't slide forward. The more the glute max is weak, the more it's going to allow that femoral head or that top of your thigh bone to slide forward and that increases the tightness of your anterior thigh muscles, your hip flexors, which then increase that arch in the back and aggravate spondylolisthesis pain. So we've talked previously on the channel about how to correct that hip glide by splitting your fingers front and back on that side greater trochanter, that hard ball on the side of your hip. If you split your fingers and hold one finger in front of that ball and one finger behind that ball, and before you flex your knee, forward or bring your hip into flexion, you generate a force backwards into the back finger away from the front finger by using the glute max. So we're going to take that correction and we're going to up it now into a more challenging exercise with our Bulgarian split squat. Bulgarian split squats are great for training the glutes as well as the legs, so we're going to use that correction as we train our glutes as we have an additional band on the back leg. So if I take this band and the lower down I place the band on my thigh, the more difficult this is going to be. So perhaps when you first begin, you have a mid-thigh contact, and you get yourself set up in a Bulgarian split squat position with one leg back, one leg forward. You take your spine and put it in a neutral position based on your, your own unique mechanics and stability issues. You engage your asymmetrical muscles. If you're not sure what that is, go to the painfreeandfit.com website. We have a free body analysis to help you start to understand how your mechanical issues, your muscle asymmetries, your posture, your movement habits, and all of your asymmetrical stresses that occur in the lower back are contributing to your spondylolisthesis pain. So for me, I'm going to use a slight posterior pelvic tilt tension, tail under. I'm going to engage my left multifidus and keep my left hip down so it doesn't hike up. For you, you may need a rotational correction of your pelvis. You may need an external oblique, an internal oblique, a multifidus correction, a latissimus correction. You have to figure it out based on an analysis of your mechanics. So in this position, the band obviously, positioned above and behind me, wants to pull my thigh back and up. It wants to contribute to more hip extension, which typically causes that femoral head, the top of the thigh bone, to slide more forward. So that's making my correction that I have for my anterior hip glide or anterior hip malposition more difficult, because now I have to keep even more tension back in the thigh, if I split my fingers on that bone we just discussed, I need even a greater tension with the back buttock, which many times is taking a break on the Bulgarian split squat. Most people feel it more on their front, and obviously because that's the thigh that's bearing most of the weight going up and down. But now that rear thigh has to participate with the glute max to keep that tension of that side thigh bone back in the socket against my rear finger of my split finger contact. So as I start to increase that tension backwards into my rear finger, I'm going to perform my split squat and the lower I go, the band is stretching. So that wants my thigh to pull backwards even more. And I need more tension moving back into my back finger on my hip to maintain that central position. I do this as I'm posterior pelvic tilting so I don't increase the arch of my lower back. 
keeping my tailbone under. And as I go up and down, I'm maintaining that pressure backwards against my back finger. Great way to train the glute max to work in keeping that hip back. This is going to transpose over to other activities such as running, walking, jumping, sports, wherever you need it in life where those hip flexors are over participating and the glute max is under participating. This way you start to retrain balance in your body. Over time this is going to help to help release your hip flexor muscles so you don't have to keep stretching your hip flexors. Remember, people that have to keep stretching hip flexors are missing the real point, which is why the hip flexors tightening in the first place. Exercises like this that train the glute max in an appropriate position of hip extension help to actually get to the root cause of the problem, which is to create more balance between the antagonist and the agonist of the hip so those hip flexors don't tighten, they don't pull the pelvis into anterior pelvic tilt, and they stop causing anterior pelvic tilt spondylolisthesis pain. If you've enjoyed this video on spondylolisthesis, Bulgarian split squats and anterior hip glides and mouth positions. Feel free to subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot of great videos out there to help you. Questions or comments, write in as always. And remember, if you're looking for a great program to figure out what your biomechanics are, where your muscle asymmetries are, where your core stability issues are, based on abnormal posture and movement habits that you've probably had through life, check out our fast track program for spondylolisthesis pain available at painfreeandfit.com. It has a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to do an analysis on your mechanics, your posture, figure out what your stability issues are, your muscle asymmetries, and then a step-by-step -step program to help you tailor fit a customized program to help rehab your back, help get you out of pain, assist healing in your body, and get you back into sports and activities again, being fit without being painful. I hope you've enjoyed this third part and final part on Bulgarian split squats with anterior hip glides for spondylolisthesis pain.